What's good, you guys? This is part one of my FL Studio tip series. If you guys want another episode, get this video to 25,000 views and I'll drop another part. Without further ado, let's get into it. One of the biggest problems I see with newer producers is they don't have the right sounds and they're using weird kits they find online or the stock sounds. And to solve that, I made a kit that is all the sounds I think you guys should have. So a link for that will be in the description. It's free, you don't have to subscribe to me or anything but anyways let's get into the fl studio tips all right tip number one is how you can do a cool reverse reverb effect what we're going to do is first go over to the part of our beat that we want to reverse into so let's say for this beat the draw now on our master we're going to open up a reverb i like valhalla but you can use a stock fl reverb i usually like to turn down the decay a little bit turn down the size but really you can just mess with the settings it'll work either way but now we're going to open up an edison quick record and change this to on input so right when it hears a sound coming in it's gonna start recording and now we're gonna play the beat but only for like one millisecond because we only want the very first part to catch in the reverb and make sure you have your edison after your reverb because otherwise it won't work all right, now, as you can see at the beginning, it's a really big waveform, so we don't have to include that part, but we're gonna drag this into the playlist and then you're gonna double click on it and reverse it and then get it to line up with where the beat comes in or where you want it to transition into. Make sure you take the Valhalla off on the master and this is what it sounds like. All right, the next tip is how to make your 808s have a cool distorted sound to them. If you open up your 808 and you click on this effects tab, you'll see that there's this RM mix knob and then an RM frequency knob. If we were to drag in a new sound, then things would look like this. The RM mix would be turned down all the way. What you can do is turn it up a little bit. For me, I like it around maybe three or 4%. And then you can mess with the RM frequency, but it sounds pretty cool at 50%. And it will add some ring modulation into your 808, which will distort it in a cool way. So this is what it sounds like without the ring modulation. And this is what it sounds like with it. Now I know this would work on other sounds, but I haven't really tested it out. Let me know if that works on other sounds for you guys, but it definitely works to distort your 808s. The next one is how to have your hi-hats reverse into themselves. So this effect can be achieved with plugins like Effectrix, but if you wanna have full control over it, here's how you can do that. So if we have a hi-hat in here and we make a very simple pattern, Now what we're gonna do is clone the hi-hat and we're gonna reverse it. And then you wanna go into this miscellaneous functions tab and use this shift knob to shift the hi-hat over until it winds up. So as you can see, if we use it right now and we put it in between these two hi-hats, it sounds a little bit off. But if we use the shift knob, we can get it so they seamlessly reverse into themselves. The one thing to remember with the hi-hat trick is if you change the BPM of your beat, then you're gonna have to change the shift knob because if you slow down the beat, then there's gonna be a bigger space in between each of your hi-hats, so it's not gonna line up anymore. All right, this is how you do a slow down intro for your beat. So what you wanna do is select the part of your beat that you want to use for the intro. So for this, I'm gonna cut the beginning of it out, select this part, because I want it to start without drums. Now we're gonna go to the master, arm it, and hit Alt-R, and then click start, and that will render it out. Um, the settings I have it on are cut remainder and song selection. And now we wanna drag in this piece of audio that we got and bring it to the beginning of our beat. And I'm gonna bring this back to normal because I want the drums to come in right away. Now we wanna move everything over a little bit. So I just hit Control A to select the whole beat and move it over because this is gonna take up a little more space um, than eight bars. So we wanna double click on the audio file that we just bounced out of our beat and change this range to 12. Make sure you're still on resample. 
and then create an automation clip for it for the pitch that is and now right at the end right where this number nine is we're going to want to paste this value so i copied it from the beginning because this is at a normal pitch and i pasted it at the end so that our end value for the pitch is going to be the pitch that the beat was at originally now we can bring this down and if it's all the way down it will start at minus 12 semitones so octave down and then glide up to normal pitch so if i play it it's going to be slowed down and pitched down and at the end it's going to reach the point where it's at a normal speed Now, if the effect is a little too drastic for you, you can raise the beginning pitch up a little bit so that it doesn't have as far to travel. So I'm gonna do that for this beat because it sounds a little weird and we'll see how that sounds. Once you have the automation clip how you would like it, what you wanna do is make sure that there's nothing getting in the way and then select this area and bounce it out again because um, the audio clip is a little deceiving with how long it actually is. So see if we load it in, this is how far it actually goes because this audio clip is the version that already has the automation printed onto it. So now we can delete what we had before, zoom into the end of it and then drag this so that it lines up with the beginning of our beat and then we can select everything and if we want to still start on the one we can drag everything back and sure it makes things a little off time um, in terms of like where the one is versus the grid but since i selected everything it doesn't really matter Next tip is how to add the way to a sound if you're feeling lazy. I have this little hi-hat loaded up and all you have to do is click on this icon and this little window right here is the sample's own echo slash delay. So you wanna change the time to four or two or whatever you want, but usually I put it at four and then no delay will happen unless you turn this feedback up. So we're gonna turn the feedback up and then this echoes, that decides how many delay tails there are. So right now it will delay four times, but if we were to turn it up to 10, which is the max, it would delay 10 times. Or if we turn it down to one, it will only delay once. Now you can mess with the panning and these mod things and the pitch, and you can make it ping pong if you'd like. But normally I just turn up the feedback and turn up the time because I'm feeling a little bit lazy and I don't want to put a whole VST on there. So as you can see, I can place notes in here and it will delay them. Now, one other thing is using this pitch knob, we can get a pretty cool delay sound effect. So I'm gonna just try to make a little more unique of a delay. I turn on ping pong, um, pan things to the left and turn up the pitch an octave. And now if we bring in, let's say a bass sound, just to use like an example of a sound that's a little more melodic. We bring in this sound and we're also gonna turn up the time to eight. Let's see how this sounds. And that was happening because I had loop points on. Pretty cool, interesting sound. Um, if you're messing with the pitch knob, it usually sounds best if you only do it up all the way or down all the way or in the middle because otherwise you get some wacky stuff. Like let's say we have the pitch at plus 48 cents and we turn the time down um, and then we turn the echoes up. It's gonna get wacky. But yeah, that's how you can use the delay in the sampler. This next trick I've showed people on TikTok before, but I thought I might as well cover it. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with 808 slides and also with lowering the velocities on notes. For instance, if we want to add pauses to our 808, but we are absolutely too lazy to go in here and change the envelope settings, we can, if we make sure that cut self is on, we can just place 
a note and then turn down the velocity and it will stop the other notes from playing. And that's how I usually do my patterns because I'm lazy. But really what this tip is about is slides. So if we click this slide icon up here, now the notes that we place will be slide notes. So rather than triggering a new note, it will affect the note before it and slide the 808 up to that note or down to that note. The cool thing is it's also velocity sensitive. So for instance, if I put a slide note right here and it's still on the same note as the one before, but I have the velocity all the way down on one of them, let's say um, the second one, it will slide the velocity down. And you might not be able to hear that very well. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to have the first note be down in velocity and then turn this one up. And as you can see, it slid up to that note and it sounded pretty cool. Now what you can also do with this is you can have things sliding up and down and the velocity is going crazy. Like one thing that I'll do a lot of the time is if I want it to go up to a certain note, let's say right here, instead of just putting a note there, I'll put a slide note there and then I'll put an 808 beforehand, but turn the velocity down. And you wanna have this note sliding up to it, so we're gonna put it before, because that means that right here, it will reach this note and it will reach maximum velocity. In that case, we can also move this a little bit back. So here's just a little example of how we can use some slide notes and changing the velocities to add some uniqueness to an 808 pattern. Now this next tip, I accidentally did one time and it's only worked a few times for me, but I thought it was worth mentioning. If you have an 808 and you accidentally put a super low note, like C2 or C1, it will make the rest of the beat like whip and sound weird in a very interesting way, it, like stutters the beat. And in this beat, I don't know that it's the best sounding thing, but it is at least interesting. And I've had beats before where it sounded really cool. So I thought it was worth mentioning. All you have to do is just put an 808 808 note super low down like that. And you want to turn your 808 up pretty loud for this to work. But hopefully you guys can hear the difference. Right here is where it does the effect. And I know that it sounds kind of fucked up, but it also sounds cool. Maybe one of you guys can find a use for that sometime. All right, now here's something that I feel like all of you guys should do, and it's make a template. So what you want to do is make a project exactly how you want. So for me, what I did is I had it changed instead of being on pattern mode, it starts out on song mode, and I already have a blank channel that has a MIDI for a clap, and the first channel already has an EQ on it that has the low end taken out, but the EQ is turned off. And that's so that if I'm using loops, it's very easy to route it to channel one and then turn on the EQ and the low end will be EQ'd out. And then I also have a limiter on my master. A lot of you guys ask what I have on my master. I have a limiter with these settings on it. Um, I just turn the envelope down and it's on limiting mode rather than compression. And then I also have this equalizer turned up a little bit. I don't know why, but I do. But yeah, you wanna get template that you like. A lot of people also have ones where they have drum sounds already in there or they already have effects on all of the channels. You can do whatever you want. You can have multiple templates. But what you want to do is you save it on the desktop. So I'm going to go template. And then there are ways to figure out where your template folder is. So for me, it's under this PC, program files, image line. And then I'm using FL Studio 21. So I'm going to go in here and then data templates. You can put as many as you want in here and then they'll show up when you go file new from template. Your templates will show up right here. And you can also change which template you automatically start out with by going to general and then going down here and selecting which one you want to start with. I know everyone's template folder might be in a little bit of a different spot, but if you look up your operating system and how to find your FL Studio program files, you should be able to find something. 
A couple other things you guys should be doing. Um, whenever you make a cool effects chain, you should save it as a mixer preset. So let's say we got a bunch of effects on here and we like it, we right click, file, save mixer state track as, and then you can make folders within there and save up a bunch of presets. It's just convenient because then if you wanna put a cool effect on a sound you just added, you already have a bunch of versions of um, different like combinations of effects that you already like. You can do the same in Ableton or other DAWs. Yeah, definitely start doing that. And and also you guys should start saving little phrases that you like. So for instance, what I've done is I started working on a kit that's just a bunch of little parts of loops and beats that I liked. And then later on, you can use them in other beats and they'll sound different in different contexts. So for instance, I'll just play a random one. At one point I made a loop and it included that. Then I went back through a bunch of my loops and bounced out a bunch of little phrases like that. And it can be helpful for you when you wanna add a little ear candy type of sound to your beat because you'll have a bunch that you already made. And also you can sell kits like that. Once I finish this kit, I'll probably end up putting it out and letting you guys buy it. Another cool thing you can do is if you have a sound and you don't remember what folder it's from, if you drag it back into the browser, it will show you what folder it was in. There are a lot of little workflow things like that. So if you guys want me to cover every single shortcut and every single little thing like that, I can do a video that's a much longer video where I cover all of those. For now, I hope you guys learned something. You know, if you're a more advanced producer, you might not have learned anything. If I helped one person out a tiny bit, well, that still makes me happy. So if you guys want another video like this, I'll come up with a bunch more random things that I can show you guys sometime I'll do a video where I compile them all together. Guess that's about it. I'll catch you guys next week.